hello, hello, hello. Today, <laughs> I'm going to take you all on a tour of the uh, sanctuary and hope that I don't walk into any spider webs, which I almost just did. So um, I'm going to keep this good old fashioned selfie stick out in front of me. That way, I'll block all the spider webs as I'm walking through the paths. So behind me is my cabin. Uh, what I'm heading up to right now is actually to go to the kitchen to return this pan. It was my birthday, but I thought I'd walk up past my toilets. Actually, I should show you a toilet and our bathroom. So that would probably be interesting for all of you. Because right now, like, this is behind me is a uh, point with my pan. This is like where the staff lives and stuff and uh, some of the long-term volunteers. Pew, those little Wendy houses right there, yes. Wood cottages, cabins with uh, tin roofs get super hot in the daytime, but also can be very nice at night. So this behind me is our toilet. Check it out. Let's see here. Do to do. We got our fancy ropes. That's to like say, hey, I'm in here. Don't come inside. Put that up. You know, do not disturbo. And then bam, this is our toilet situation. These are called pit toilets. Basically, that toilet goes down into the ground into a, uh, a pit and there's like natural enzymes and all sorts of little critters down there that break down all the poop and pee and then uh, it smells great. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what we use. A good old fashioned pit toilet. No need to flush in these toilets. See, that's what the sign says. Eco toilets, flush free. Yeah, but you can only put like certain things down there like poop, pee, and toilet paper, and that's about it. Otherwise, it won't break down and has trouble. And then this, walking into, is our shower. Do do do. Let's see here. It's all gas powered. Yes, I know what you're thinking. And yes, the answer is yes. Showers, exciting. That's how we start the tour here at the VMF. Spider webs on the face, showers, and pit toilets. Oh yeah, classy business. All right, <clears throat> let's take this pan back home. And uh, when we get up there, I'll show you guys the, um, what's it called? Cottage, volunteers can hang out. Fancy kitchen where the cook cooks all the food for everyone. This is going into uh, the cottage right now. Sounds like our chef is having some fun cooking. What's up, dude? This is Maro. He's our chef. Let's see here. Boom. He's just rocking out while he's cooking. This is Noam. She's going to be like, hey, don't film me now. It's my off day. Drop this pan back off. All right. So, yeah. Hey, look. That's my movie poster. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. So this is where all the food cooking happens. This is how things get scheduled out for the day. Plates, bottom section, middle section, top section. Those are all the monkey sections. Meds, monitoring, Disneyland, sick bay. All that is. Oops. I mean all that stuff. <laughs> Basically tells everyone where they need to be, at what time they need to be there. I'm running out of battery. Well, that's great. I knew it was going to happen eventually. So this is a uh, like games room area. That's where people hang out on their days off. So here you got some hammocks, tons of books, more books than you know what to do with. Look at all those books. It's like some abstract art right there. Couches, chilling areas. Ping pong, volunteers. You know, it's a place for young people to come and hang out. So yeah, anyway, this is what it looks like from afar. Games area, cottage area. There you go. Pretty fancy, no? Oh look, it's a Georgie boy. Hi, you big mouth. Hi, big mouth. This dog has got a broken liquor. And what I mean by that is he can't do nothing without trying to lick. Huh, Georgie Boyo? Yeah. He's not even a year old. So, um, now we're heading down toward 
all the monkeys in the enclosures and everything are. And uh, we got a George, which always makes things more interesting and complicated because monkeys don't like dogs. And when you got a wily little Georgia running around, well, then everybody's going to be like, oh, get away from us. There's no dogs around here. Anyway, here's uh, what this looks like walking into the garden of monkeys. So this first troop up top here uh, is called D&D, &D, which is Dino and Daniel. Uh, these are all the intro enclosures. So basically, like, these intro enclosures are where um, sick monkeys stay. They're also where monkeys that are, like, ex-pets or that have issues um, that can't integrate into troops stay. Um, there's all sorts of reasons monkey will be, monkeys will be in intro enclosures. Sometimes it'll be like a monkey gets injured in the troop and has to be brought in to be monitored or they're not doing well, so they probably get brought in. Um, but there's a lot that live permanently in here and have partners that they live with simply because they just don't integrate well with other monkeys or they have other pre-existing conditions that don't allow them to be in the troop. All the, the intro cages have these like little things on the doors that tell you who they are. So these two are Devon and Elf. Um, obviously, you can see the rest of it. Both humanized, arrived as orphans, used to live at Skunky G with another female called Jessie, but they were moved to D&D in August 2013. Devin has helped look after babies previously when she was still young. Do not give human attention. So what are we going to do? We're not going to give them human attention. These guys over here, Sam Jarvis and Nicholas, previously kept together as pets in a cage. Sam Jarvis was castrated by the person who kept him. Nicholas is larger and more dominant. Be careful they can grab. So again, these guys have a, quite a bit of anger issues and stuff because of their previous situation and they don't get along with other monkeys, they don't get along with people, they don't really just have issues. Um, and when they get castrated, it's a huge issue for them as well, especially because like for the males, those blue testicles um, really are like an indicator of status and a lot, <laughs> just a, a huge indicator of status, of sexual prowess, of ability in the troop. Um, it's, it's a huge sight indicator uh, for the other monkeys. So when people get rid of those, it damages any chance of the male having any sort of like social standing in a natural troop ever again. So this is basically like what all the enclosures look like. You see there's just like this big electric fence that goes all along the outside of the enclosure. Um, when the few monkeys get fed, you can see this is like food pile from yesterday night. Uh, there's little food piles sort of everywhere, like where these guys sitting. Uh, so when the food just gets thrown over the top of the fence, shoop, lands inside, and then that way nobody ever has to go inside to do anything. Really, honestly, like try to never go inside the uh, enclosures. Yeah, those are monkeys screaming. Um, you hear that all the time. But nobody ever tries to go inside the enclosures. It's just like less contact the better. So this is the D&D uh, &D airlock. Basically all the airlocks are like these two gates. Um, you have one, two. That way you can have one open, close it, and be inside and no monkeys can escape. You can have stuff inside if you need to, to go in, whatever. Whatever, whatever. Here's one of our feeding cages. Um, as you can see, hello sir. Uh, so the feeding cages are obviously where the milk go for the babies. You can see the milk bottles in there right now. And then the babies can crawl inside. Yes, Georgie boy. Yeah. <laughs> Monkeys don't know how to feel about a Georgia. <laughs> this is why I said this is what happens when you bring George around. That's Conjo. He's an orphan from last baby season. He's very talkative. He's always communicating. But yeah. All right. This is Goliath Troop that I'm walking past now. Um, this is why, like, it's so hard when I try to film anything of the babies once they're out in the troop uh, and, like, try and, like, catch up with them or something later on. I mean, you can just see how dense this is. It's tough to film out in the out in the main enclosures once the uh, the babies have gone into the troop because they're just not that willing to come to the fence because the moms don't want them to. Um, this is BB and Titan. You see here, 
they're old, they love each other. There's an episode that's a vlog episode actually where you get to see them meet for the first time. Um, I don't remember which one it was, but they like pass each other and go straight for the food. But this is young BB right here. She's a beautiful lady. Hello, mama. She's lip smacking because she wants some grooming. Yeah, there's Titan. They both think I might be giving them some grass, so they're coming to check me out. You can see the way they're looking around is like very much um, trying to like scan my hands and see if there's anything that I might have for them. These two are uh, Api, which is monkey in Afrikaans, and Jamba. And they live together too. Hi, Jamba. What's up, dude? He's a handsome guy, if he looks at the camera. Hey, show me your back. Hi, Apps. Api, Api, Api. She's very sweet. Come here. Come up higher so we can see you. Hmm? Yeah. Hi, Mama. Yeah. So she wants me to groom her really bad, but I won't because we're not supposed to. But look at that pretty old lady, huh? Yeah, yeah. That's just happy chatter sounds that she's making. It's just her being like, hello, I'm your friend. We know each other. How about you groom me? We can spend some time socializing, talk about the babies, talk about the trouble in the troop, you know, the drama, how BB's been kind of rude lately. Marcy's been stealing all the porridge, that kind of stuff. Like a sewing circle. Right, Oppie? Yeah. All right, where shall we go? Let's go over to Camelot Rock, huh? And if I'm gonna do a tour, I can't just show you only monkeys, gotta show you some of the cool spots too, right? Spots where you can hang out and see pretty things. I mean, you can just see, like, this whole property has been kept as natural as possible for as long as possible. Um, and it's interesting because we're surrounded by farms, like, on all sides of us. One neighbor next to, closest to my cabin side has like horses and goats um, and cows and occasionally they'll get through the fence and come over and try and get into my garden and stuff. Um, oh man, when they had baby goats, that was the best. Little baby goats coming by. The other day I was playing guitar outside and the cows came by and I was like, oh, wonder about all those YouTube videos where like you see people or Instagram videos, where you see people like playing music for cows. Wonder if the cows will respond. So I just like went outside and was like, started playing and like five cows just walked up, rocked right up to me and were just standing there like staring at me with their ears flapping and crap. And I was like, hmm, what are the odds? Oh man, also I, I curse like a sailor, so it's gonna be hard for me. I'm gonna have to like really try not to curse. So I apologize if there's like a bunch of, see, I almost said a bunch of stuff bleeped out. Anyway, <laughs> um, what was I saying? We're surrounded by farms, we've got like, all these like just normal places around us so we're this like weird little sanctuary in the middle of all this farmland area um, but because of that we're like this final little like isolated island of natural bush where like everywhere else is chopped down and like it's just fields and all plantations and stuff and like here it's just acres and acres of bush which is really really cool and so you can get lost up here just walking around like in this little forest it's neat bushveld they call it um, so what I'm walking up to now is called Camelot Rock. Um, it's a pretty awesome spot. Let's see, big old rock, right? Look at that rock. A tiny head in the corner, a big rock. And it's called Camelot Rock because this is Camelot Troop. Camelot Troop is the largest troop at the sanctuary. And as you can see, it's got a pretty awesome view from Camelot Rock as well. I don't know if you can see out there in the distance. Yeah, look at that. So you can kind of see some of the farmland out there, villages up on the mountain. Let's see, that's all farmland. And up there is villages. Yeah, mountain ranges. It's a great mountain range in South Africa called the Drakensberg Mountain Range. The Drakensberg, real famous, real beautiful, real beautiful. Look it up on Google, Drakensberg Mountain Range. A little bit of fun fact for your, for your pocketbooks. I don't know how that affects your pocketbooks, but whatever. Hey, look, Camelot Troop monkeys. Hi, kids. What are you guys doing? <laughs> Nervous. Vervet monkeys probably have, like, the best anxiety. Like, they are such anxious monkeys. It's fantastic. They have that perfect amount of anxiety that just makes them super twitchy and funny to watch because they're always like... <laughs> 
And they calm down. <laughs> and the eyebrow. Just <laughs> ridiculous. Whew, lots of walk in here, as you can see. This video is going to be like two hours long because it's just going to be me walking. So yeah, <laughs> here we are walking down another path. <laughs> you like walking? Want to walk around in some tall grass? Come to the Vervet Monkey Foundation in South Africa. This is Royal Troop. It's one of our bigger troops. hanging out in the shade. It's not too hot today. It's pretty nice. It's sunny. The sun's hot, as always here. But the uh, there's a nice little breeze. It's not too humid. It's actually really good weather right now. Our rainy season's pretty much coming to a close. Um, rainy season is the summer months for us. So it's opposite, obviously, because we're in the southern hemisphere. So it's like the winter months in the US are the summer months down here. Um, so it's been raining like crazy, but it rains during the summer, so it's like hot and humid and wet. And that's why it's so lush and green. Um, and just now it's starting to go away from summer and we're starting to get colder weather. We're starting to have the nights be more cold. It's more overcast in the mornings. There's more breeze. But what that also means is that the rains are coming to a close and all of this beautiful green foliage is going to die and everything is going to be just sticks and brown and it looks so different here when that happens. So this is inquisitive vervet mode. They're doing, that sound you can hear is like a little bit of an alarm call. It's a kind of a snake alarm call, but they're not really sure what to alert me or this stick and camera as. This is what they do. They sort of just like will jump side to side and they'll tilt their heads and they'll look real nervous and like creep up. <laughs> Look at this one's ears. Look at him. Oh man, he's adorable. Look at that. Ah, so check this out. This is one of our intro cages um, for the babies. And in here, I believe we have Freya and Leo. Yes, look. Little Miss Freya with the pale face. Huh? Hello, cute little lady. And then down on the ground, you've got Leo. I'm not sure who the mom is in with them right now. Hey look, it's like an episode of the baby's vervet forest, but it's not. Yay! Yeah, they're doing good. I think they'll get to go out into the troop soon. Just enjoying some breakfast with mom. <laughs> 